Hi everyone, this is Jim. I played a, a game recently that I thought was uh, pretty interesting, so I thought I would share it with you. Uh, what was uh, unusual about this game was that it involved an instance of a seki, or a mutual life. And uh, this is one of those things that uh, they always teach you about, but uh, they don't show up so often in uh, actual games. So I thought it was interesting to show how such a situation uh, can arise, and uh, how you might want to deal with it. Okay, so I had the black pieces here. I was playing uh, an opponent who was rated uh, 15Q, so a slightly stronger opponent. Um, I played over here. Um, I've learned since, actually, that the proper etiquette is to play in the upper right-hand corner, so I'll be doing that next time. My opponent played down here at the diagonal corner, and also at a 3-4 point. So since he played at a 3-4 point, I like to have a little bit of asymmetry, but he's already given me that asymmetry so I can play at the 4-4 point here, and then he played at this 3-4 uh, point at the other corner. So we've grabbed our corners. I extend out, and then um, he played, uh, oh, he played an approach move here, which I thought was a bit unusual. It's a very close approach, just touching that stone. And, you know, I could fight here, but I decided uh, this is actually giving me quite a lot of space in the corner if he's willing to uh, uh, build a little wall there. So we do that, and then... Um, I decided to approach here rather than continuing that wall. I mean, if he builds a wall across this line, then I, I'm restricted to uh, less than half the board, so so obviously I can't let that continue. But uh, this approach is a good move. Also, remember I have black, so I have to overcome the Comey, so I have to get more than half of the board. I have to get an extra five and a half points somehow. So um, he reacted to the approach move by playing a stone on top of my stone, which I thought was pretty unusual. Normally I've seen the attachment underneath, or there's other moves to defend the corner. You wouldn't want to play a move back in this area because you've already got a couple stones here, but you could play anywhere around here, I would say. Uh, I would think, rather. Um, so he played on top, and um, I thought, uh, you know, I could counterattack this stone, but I thought just uh, uh, building some territory over here on the uh, bottom side would be good for me if I can... Uh, take away some territory from my opponent over here and secure this territory for myself over here. That's a winning game strategy. So we'll just see how it unfolds. He uh, continues to place his stones on top of mine and uh, as long as he's doing that I'm happy to continue. If he lets me build this wall, um, you know, I think I'm gaining space over here. Although that is a little bit questionable because this is a, on the fourth line, so this is a pretty high wall. So it's not clear that this is actually a territory of mine. But it's certainly, at the very least, I'm taking away territory from white because this is not, uh, he can't um, cut this wall off. It, it has a, an, an eye out in this direction. So he tried to counterattack from underneath. And so I thought that was a pretty interesting strategy. Um, so let's let's continue. And I cut. I think uh, based on what happened in the game, I probably would be better off just playing here at J3 if I want to stop him from expanding further and maybe try and create a little space over here. Um, but he, I cut, and uh, he attacked that stone, and I extended, and then he placed a stone at M4 here, just putting it on top of my stone. And these stones can't escape; they are just dead. So I give up at this point, and I place the stone at J3. That's why I think I probably should have just played there immediately. And uh, But this does place this stone in Atari, and my opponent, I think, he just played a little too quickly. He went to M3, trying to capture these stones, and then I was able to capture his stone and save those two. So it went like this. Ended up like this, and so I really have eaten out a lot of space from his corner. He played down here, and he's got you know, a tiny amount of space. It's safe. It's connected underneath here. Um, but um, but I have managed to scoop out a lot of space there. So I think instead, uh, at this point, he probably should have just connected here. These two stones are still dead. And, you know, how am I going to play here? I might try to seal them off like this. He can capture those stones at any time. He might even try and uh, further erase the influence of these stones and prevent me from grabbing any territory by playing here, and then I would have to uh, run for it with those stones. Um, anyway, so that would be better for white than what he played. But he let me um, capture that stone, and the game went like this. And so after that corner was settled, he started to uh, surround this group from the other side. He didn't play inside. He just surrounded it from the outside and let me build up this uh, space. So I was pretty happy with this. I've got 
fair amount of space here that was on his side of the board. And so I think I have a good game. And at this point, I, I didn't bother. If he wants to steal a couple points from me by creeping around here, that's okay. It's a bigger move to come back and play here and try and grab more space over here. So I think that was correct. He did creep around. I had the feeling he might try that. Uh, he just seemed to be focused on going after my stones. And, uh, well, this is a moment to be careful. These stones are not connected, and they can get uh, attacked. So, for example, if you just tried to block here, um, instead of filling in like you might expect at first, uh, white can win those stones just by cutting here. And even if you take that stone on c1, um, after white plays at e1, those stones are in Atari and there's nowhere for them to run. They are going to get caught. So um, you have to fill in in a situation like this. So that's what I played as I played the, uh, the move at uh, E2. And now these are connected and he can creep in a little further but this time it would be safe to cut him off um, because the cut here no longer threatens those stones. So um, that's the way to play that and it did win a couple points for, uh, for white. Um, but at that point, he didn't continue to attack. He decided to uh, turn his corner to the right-hand side and try and reduce over here, surround these stones. And um, again, he started building a wall, and I was happy. If he wanted to build a wall all the way across, I would let him do that. Because if you look at the territory, he has this territory between these two walls, one here and one here, and a little bit more on this corner. And I have uh, this territory here, plus uh, this invasion that I was successful with. So that's definitely a winning advantage for black. You can just see that by looking at it. So anyway, he switched his attention to the other corner. And uh, once again, he seemed to let me just build this wall here. Kind of surprising. I think white needed to play more aggressively and to come inside. So at this point, um, you know, there's still holes in the wall. I was trying to fill the gap when I played at F5 there. So he can kind of creep in bit by bit. But I thought it was more important to, to come back and try and secure the territory in the corner and over here. So I want to try and place some stones here and here and, and maybe here just to try and hold all this area. Um, he starts attacking over here immediately, so I got I got one free move to secure this corner, um, but I had to respond to this attack. And uh, and then he cuts here. This is a good move. I can't. Uh, well, I could save those stones. I decided not to save those stones. If you if I played here, uh, he could go after this stone. And then, let's see, I could capture his, but he could threaten my stone underneath. And uh, let's see, if I fill in, he can extend this way. And this is connected underneath to this side. So he's, he's basically invading it and erasing all my territory over here. Now, I could have played better there, I think. Um, if we go forward after the capture, and um, he plays there, threatening this stone. I should probably give that back and just play over here and set up a second... Uh, defensive wall in this direction and so that limits the damage so that's probably okay I decided right at this point though to try and limit my losses by playing here I give up those two stones and just get a secure wall he captures those stones and then I fill in that uh, corner so he can't uh, break through and uh, I'm feeling pretty good about that so I think I have space and now I start filling in um, this wall and making it more secure. He always had ways to break through there. And um, now I'm starting to feel pretty good about my situation. I got to play another move here to protect that connection there and also to look out at this area a little bit and try and protect that a bit. I'm still not entirely sure an invasion might be successful here, so we'll just see what happens in the game. He starts uh, coming around this side trying to reduce over here and I block and then he secures this connection, so um, I can't counterattack his stones there. And now I just secure this connection over here on this side. And so I th I'm feeling pretty good. I think I have a one game at this point. I've got this group here and, and all of this area that I don't think he can invade, although that remains to be seen. <laughs> Hasn't been proven yet. So I was just making little moves. And this move here, by the way, let's back up. This move here was a very small move. I was seeing if I could creep out into this area, but he can immediately cap it. So that really gained uh, I, at most one point. <laughs> and there were, there were definitely bigger moves I could have played. I could have played in here to secure this area, and I could have played over here to secure the corner, or over here to secure this area, and those all would have probably been better moves. Anyway, I played there, 
and uh, and then I filled in here. Once again, I'm missing an opportunity to protect, and then he invades. And uh, so before that, when it's my turn, and White had just played this move, uh, g6. At this point, I should have uh, started to think. And what are the things to worry about here? One thing to worry about is that this area that I think is mine is surrounded by two groups. I don't have one group of stones, but I have two groups of stones um, that have, there's a cutting point, then they can potentially be separated. That's one worrisome point. A second worrisome point is that there's no outside liberties at all. He's taken away every outside liberty. And the third worrisome point is that uh, there's no eyes in here. So this is all just one big eye. And if white can invade here, which is what happens, now the danger becomes realized. Um, this stone here is, is, this is a very good and accurate move. It uh, takes a look at this connection here and pretty much forces me to connect. And every time I make a move here to connect or limit his stones, I'm reducing the, the, uh, my opportunities to create a second eye. I never created a second eye in here. And if he can uh, prevent me from creating a second eye, he can win. He can create, he can uh, capture all of those uh, stones and, and he will have effectively uh, two thirds of the board, <laughs> nearly two thirds of the board. So that would be a winning advantage if uh, white can win those stones. So uh, what to do about this? Uh, if I don't connect, I think I'm in big trouble. For example, if I try over here just to uh, stop his stone from expanding, then he cuts. And now if I go after his stones, he goes after mine, and he wins the capturing race. He captures that whole group, and then this group will fall next. So that is not salvageable. Let's see, uh, are there other ways I could play? If I um, play on this side, I can still connect. See, I can try and capture that group. He goes here, go here, he goes there. Yeah, I think he just wins the capturing race. So I don't think any move that uh, that tries to any move other than connecting is playable there. I think I had to connect, and that's what I played in the game. And then he went um, to uh, expand on the inside, and uh, so I, I played a move to block his expansion. And also, I was realizing uh, my difficulties that I needed to create a second eye. So I was playing this with the hopes of uh, being able to play at f1 and create a second eye there, and then I'd be safe and I don't all that territory. But he played there first. <laughs> And so now I'm I'm, uh, I'm starting to sweat a little bit. How can I deal with this invasion? So I played underneath. This is trying to uh, kind of surround the stones indirectly without reducing all my liberties. If I play too many stones directly next to mine, I'm taking away my my liberties, and he might just be able to surround my stones and kill them. Right? It, currently, this I have one, two, three, only four liberties. So only four moves, and that uh, that group is dead. <clears throat> and uh, so I have to capture his stones, and I need to capture his stones in a way that uh, leaves me the possibility of creating a second eye. I still don't have two eyes in there. So anyway, he played at J1, and uh, he's going to capture this stone, and I think that would be, if I let him do that, I think that loses. I think then he can fill in these liberties and win. So I captured his stone, which uh, something I was a little reluctant to do because now I'm down to three liberties, one, two, three. And um, but I didn't see any alternative, and then he plays here. So right here, I can go for a seki, uh, and that is I can get a seki by playing at j1. And now this is a situation where um, this group is alive as long as this group is alive. <laughs> but if I ever try to capture it, say if I ever played at uh, h3, then uh, that it takes away my, uh, I only have two liberties, and that takes one of the two away, and he could play here at e1 and capture my whole group. So I can never, I can never play at either of those two squares. And similarly, white can never play at those two squares either, so white can't actually capture me. If he tries to play here, and then I can capture the group. And this remaining shape, this twisty shape here, is of the sort where I can always form an eye. Say if he plays here, I can play there. Uh, wherever he plays, I can always form a second eye. So I will live. So this is a seki here, if I were to just place my stone there. I didn't go for it at first. I didn't quite uh, realize that. I, I was still um, worried about um, <coughs> getting uh, getting captured here. And I didn't realize I could make a seki. So I played over here at... Um, 
where was that move? Let's let's back up. I was getting lost. So let's see. He played at J1. I played at J2. He played at uh, G1, threatening my stone. And I played um, somewhere else. Oh, this is confusing. He captured my stone. And um, I can't capture back immediately. I need to make a co-threat here. So I played at uh, N2. Let's see, he captured that stone. And now I captured back. And then he invaded on the other side. And now I realize the Seki possibility. And I filled in at, uh, at uh, J1 there. So this is a Seki. It's neither alive nor dead. And uh, and my um, the the time that I took out to fight the co battle for one step actually cost me a move because White got one invasion move for free here and now he gets the second invasion move which he would have had he would have had at least one of those moves but now he got two um, so so this is settled over here this is neither alive nor dead so I that was a good result for me by the way because white lost all this territory if white was able to capture this white would have a winning game but i still um i only um nobody has any territory over here these are neutral points in between and uh but i have removed all of this from white's territory so that's that's a a good thing for me and so now the outcome of the game hinges on this invasion here and uh well this is a little bit different there's a lot more space over here for white to try and make eyes um, but there's also that also means I don't have to worry about those uh, about my stones being killed from the inside. I can I can fight this battle pretty much unrestricted, and so um, so that's how we get to. I, I try to uh, first I, I try to block his stones from expanding too far. He tries to expand in the other direction, and then I try to cut them apart, and um, I succeed in winning one stone there. But that was probably a sacrifice so he can get uh, some shape over here. But I'm able to uh, surround his stones, and I don't think he's got enough room for two eyes. At this point, um, if he could place a stone here, he'd have one eye here and, uh, and one eye here. If he could place a stone here and a stone here. Or maybe just a stone here would do it. So it's close, but I would get the, st I get the stone there first, so I prevent him from forming an eye. And uh, he fought on for a few moves. But then uh, we both paused at this point, not seeing a way to make any more progress. So these stones are all dead. This is uh, Those are not legitimate eyes there. I can creep in and gather them one by one. So this is, um, <clears throat> so we both paused and counted the result. And I won this game by about five points. So it was a close game, but I had enough points to overcome the Seki. And, uh, and clearly, I mean, to overcome the Komi. He had five points of Komi being uh, white. And, and so I had uh, maybe 10 more points on the board than he did. And clearly this invasion over here, uh, combined with uh, creating a Seki here rather than losing those stones, was what allowed me to win that game. Okay, so I hope you guys enjoyed this. Leave any comments you have in the section below, and I will see you again soon. Bye.